Well, hello everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys your weekly soul connection reading. So this is going to be for those of you that feel a soul connection with another person where there could be a challenge or separation currently, but just take what resonates for you and get rid of anything that doesn't. All the decks I'll be using here today are created by myself and will be listed down below. And if you guys would like to book your own personal reading with me, I have some links down below on how you can arrange that. If you are a a, a new person clicking on this video, definitely consider subscribing. I bring plenty of uh, different types of readings to my channel on all kinds of different connections. And if you guys are a returning subscriber, thank you guys so much for your love and support always. So anyways, you guys, let's go ahead and get into the reading. All right. The very first thing that we're going to focus on you guys is the other person. Okay. So like, what are they feeling and thinking towards you and this connection this week? So we've got my connections for the modern world Oracle with the matching tarot deck and the divine masculine haunted cards. So we're going to break it down into four different categories. So I'm just going to shuffle each deck and we're just going to take what we what we are feeling. Ooh, let's see here. This is mental energy. What is this? What is your person? So it doesn't matter, you know, what is your person thinking towards you this week? Like, how are they seeing you? How are they seeing this connection? What does this energy look like? Ooh, we have taboo. Okay. So for some of them, what I'm getting here is that their hands are tied meaning like they feel like they can't do what they want to do. They might feel stuck for some reason, whether that is outside circumstances, circumstances that they've created, maybe circumstances that you're creating, but they feel like their hands are tied. Now, some of them also might feel like you're the kind of individual where maybe it would be taboo to be with you. There could be a difference, um, you know, in your upbringing, um, you know, who you guys are with your social standing, et cetera. So there could be something about you that's a little taboo for them to be involved with. So let's go ahead and get a tarot card to see what else is going on. The Knight of Cups. So the Knight of Cups is the uh, Pisces energy here. Uh, so it's kind of like, I... I, I, I'm just getting this and I don't know who it's for, but I know it's wrong to love you, but I love you. There's that. So I feel like that taboo energy is basically like maybe friends or family or society will not accept this connection. But I'm also getting that some of them may be involved with another person and they feel like it's taboo to have feelings towards you. Their heart seems to be um, in the space where they're feeling something and they might be thinking in terms of kind of stepping outside of that taboo box and just expressing themselves to you. So this says charming, romantic, and poetic for the Knight of Cups. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get some more information about headspace thoughts. Waves roll in my thoughts, oceans. So like oceans, right? Uh, a lot of water energy here because of Pisces, and now we have this ocean energy. Um, it's like, what is the ocean? The ocean is ruled by the moon and the cycles of the moon. Waves roll in, waves roll out. So I just feel like this thought process with this individual, it comes and goes in waves. There are times when they're really, really thinking about you heavily. And then there are times where, you know, maybe they're distracted or they're just focusing on something else, but it's become a little taboo and it's become their little secret to think about you. That's what I'm getting here. It's like a little snack for them. And it's either a little snack because it's so taboo or because they shouldn't be thinking about you or, um, there's something about you that's very exciting. And so if you're not together with this person anymore, it could be that you guys really just, just, um, you know, just stripped down completely and just were authentically yourselves, no shame or anything, but maybe to other people, it would be like, oh my gosh, like, you know, that's really crazy or that's just really, Ooh, you know, 
and you and this person could have shared that and so they have these memories of the taboo times that you guys shared so very interesting <laughs> so that's what we have for their thoughts let's now take a look at their um emotions right now all right emotions what is this person's heart space towards you heart space energy Ooh, we have fearful okay fearful what is the energy of this fearful emotion heart space Ooh, we have the empress energy which is taurus and libra venus so the empress is feminine okay fertile mother nature um, someone who's very creative, very abundant, definitely like queen-like energy. All right, so let's see what else. We have now I am nothing at all. Interesting. Okay, so I feel like what's going on here, and I think that it is kind of telling that this person in this card is looking through a hole and this person is looking through a gate. Okay. So in this person's heart space, what I'm getting here is that, um, because perhaps if this is like an old story or some sort of past energy that they were fearful to really let this feminine, this, this empress, this queen into their heart space. Okay. So they may have acted out of fear as in maybe they, um, you know, just suddenly and abruptly shifted gears, left your life, stopped speaking to you, um, you know, dropped this or just acted a certain way. So I kind of feel like because they have made a decision, they're now regretting this decision in their heart space because now they can only really look through something in order to view you and see you now. That might be social media, that might be looking at your picture, that might be even trying to investigate and find something out about you because there could just be the separation or that you've just disappeared from their life, okay? Now I am nothing at all. This person may have, have felt in their heart space before that they were... Um, that, that, you know, that they were awesome, that they were, you know, going to just move through life and they were just going to find everything that they were looking for. And I just feel in their heart space, the reason that this is coming up is because the grass wasn't green, greener on the other side. Um, they didn't actually find what they were looking for. It wasn't all that when they got there. And so there's some regret that they have in their heart space because to me, this, this feels like they value you now, but maybe they did not value you in the past. And so now they're kind of like looking at you and they're looking you, at you as this vibrant empress, this queen. And now they feel like, they're not good enough or they feel like a fool. So that's that now I'm nothing at all. I'm so now I'm fearful to even come towards you if there is a separation because now I don't feel good enough because you have risen above. You have done really well for yourself. You are, um, you know, I, I see your value now, which I may not have seen it before. So that's the energy in their heart space right now. I hope that resonates with someone out there. All right, now let's take a look and see what's going on in the physical 3D world, like energy. What is the energy in the physical world? The reality. Okay, so we have polar opposites. Wow. So this could be that where you and this person are at in the physical world, like you're on opposite ends of the world or what you have going on versus what they have going on is just completely opposite. This could also tie back into the taboo energy where someone is just like, you know, it, it would be crazy for us to even think that like we could be together or that this would work. We're like polar opposites, but there's something about it that does work. There's something about it that draws this person towards you physically. Like they're very attracted to you as a soul, as a person, you know, who you are. They're very mesmerized by you is what I'm seeing as well. So even though they might, you might be in complete opposite, um, just ways of living even, you know, this person recognizes it, but they're still drawn to you. Ten of 
temperance, Sagittarius energy. So it says moderation, taking it slow and tranquility. Temperance is one of those cards of obviously moderation. You know, you're taking it slow. You're kind of maybe waiting for better timing. Maybe you realize that right now is not the time to take any action steps towards this connection in the physical world, kind of tempering out the energy, waiting it out a little bit. Um, the temperance can also be reconciliation. So it's like two cups reconciling and coming back together. So, so I do feel like this person feels that what you guys have going on in your physical worlds might just be pulled like it's, it's just like it would be a conflict right now to try to reconcile and come back together. So this person has made a decision to just kind of hold back, you know, not push forward in that reconciliation just right now. Okay. Maybe they look at your life and see that you have a lot going on and maybe they feel like they don't have anything going on. Would that be a match? Well, if they don't feel good about themselves, maybe not. Might be that they have a lot going on and uh, maybe they're even with someone else. And so of course it wouldn't be ideal to try to come towards you or contact you. So there could be a couple of different reasons why that's coming through. Sorry, I didn't mean to slam that on the thing. Pray. I know I've been cruel. Ooh. So someone is admitting here, and just take it if it resonates, that they were cruel. They really were. They were cruel. And maybe they've prayed for some divine intervention, or they've prayed that you would maybe return or that you guys would reconcile. But if that didn't happen, it's like now really putting them in that mindset of, wow, I guess I deserve this. I was cruel. So I am getting that for some of you, not all of you, that this person was very cruel to you and they said some things or did some things. And that's probably why they're fearful when it comes down to uh, either reconciling or reaching out to you. And so because you haven't returned to them or because you've just moved on with your life, now this person has to sit in this energy and realize you never returned and you didn't return because of the way that they acted. Maybe you moved on, maybe you've leveled up. Not for everybody, that's for some, okay? But this person knows they've been cruel and they may feel like they want to come towards you, but because of what you guys both have going on in your lives, they kind of think twice and they don't make the decision to actually take action steps towards that. So that's what's going on in the physical world. This might be why this individual isn't coming towards you right now. So let's take a look and see what is the soul's energy soul higher self energy we have submerged so obviously we can see this person is submerged in water we have the lover's energy wow okay lovers is connected to the sign of gemini this is duality harmony unity it's twin energy. Halo, I'm addicted to your light. Oh my gosh. Okay, you guys. I mean, this just gives me goosebumps because this person, I like I said before, it's like your little snack, your little mental snack for this person to submerge and 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 like really get lost in your energy. Um, it's almost like they fantasize about you when they go deep into their emotions. They feel this connection with you. They're addicted to the light that comes from you. So they might see you as an angel. They may have called you an angel at some point um, in time in your connection with them, but they see you as a counterpart. They see you as someone that, that provides for them some kind of light that they either don't have on their own or that they haven't been able to actually connect with, with other people. So they're addicted to your energy. They're addicted to you. And that might be very uncomfortable for them as in they don't want to be in a way addicted to you, but they are. But I feel like it's when this person really takes the time to go deep within themselves that they feel this energy. So I don't think that this individual is walking around 24 seven addicted to you. Um, but when they really, really take the time to sit in their energy, whether it's through meditation or they're alone or they're deep in their thoughts, that's a submerged energy. They're really feeling this connection. 
and they're addicted to the light of this connection. Like it draws them in, it draws them to you. There's something very magical. There's something very either taboo or mystical or enchanting about you to this person. That's what we're seeing today. So hope that makes sense and resonates for you guys. So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch gears and we're going to take a look and see what are you feeling towards this person. So you might say, well, gosh, I already know how I'm feeling, but let's just see how the energy comes up. So now we're going to go into the divine feminine ghosted deck along with my twin flame journey oracle and twin flame journey tarot cards. All right, let's see what we need to know here. All right, so how are you holding this person's energy when you think about them or how you're seeing them currently? We have soulmate energy, okay? So of course, this is counterpart energy. You see this person as someone of significance to you. We're not necessarily going to use labels here. Some of you could see this person as a twin flame or soulmate, or maybe you just don't really think too much about the label, but your, your heart feels something significant here. Ooh, we have the King of Cups, Scorpio's energy. Okay, so what I'm seeing from this um, is that you do see this individual as someone, right, who may be here to help you to master something within yourself. I think that that's beautiful. So that's usually how we're going to look at a counterpart. This counterpart has come into my life in order to help me see things and feel things that I, I couldn't feel before. I couldn't feel on my own. They inspire me like a muse to see life differently, to see myself differently, to heal in ways that maybe I never thought were possible, or to perhaps trigger things within me to help me to ascend. So that's how you see this person, you guys. You see this person as someone who's very significant on your transformational journey because Scorpio is connected to death and transformation. And that's what you're feeling with this person is that they awaken something within you, something old dies within you, and something new is reborn when you connect with this person. So it's a very transformative, very intense Scorpio vibe energy, okay? As in this person could have rocked your freaking world <laughs> when you first saw them or when you met them or just the time that you spent with them. All right, so let's see what else. I think I see you when I dream, summer girl. <laughs> okay, so what I'm seeing here is that you dream of this person. So when you go to bed at night, maybe even when you just close your eyes and you, and you meditate, that's when you connect with this person. So maybe you're not actually seeing them in the physical world or spending time with them or even talking to them, some of you. You do see them though when you dream. So you're connecting with this individual when you dream. You're connecting with them on the astral plane. That's what's happening there. That's pretty cool. So that's how you're seeing this person right now is in your dreams. All right. You could also see this person as the person of your dreams too. So let's see what's going on in the emotions and heart space with this person. What is your heart energy towards them currently? Oh, we have barrier. Okay. So there could be um, a block that you're aware of or that you're feeling. It could even be something within your own heart space that's blocked. And, you know, you're kind of looking at this connection and going deep within yourself to see what we can try to learn about ourselves. Ooh, eight of cups. So there's a couple of different stories coming up here. This individual could have walked away from you. They could have, um, you know, abandoned you, ghosted you, simply just you guys pretty much agreed, hey, you know what, this isn't something that, you know, we can do right now, or this just isn't going to work. But most of the times people just, just walk away. You know, there's no real explanation. Sometimes people don't even know how to use their words to communicate. So that's why you've got ghosting and all other kinds of hurtful things that happen here. Um, but this could also be explaining you, your energy, that you realize that you couldn't really move forward with this individual. You couldn't push forward through this barrier. You weren't going to bang on this person's heart. You weren't going to bang on their door to try to make them talk to you or, or see you or want to be with you or to, to open their heart space towards you. So you let them go. 
I'm getting here. Some of you guys had to walk away yourself or some of you let this person go or they walked away from your life, but you can see the keyword evolving. The eight of cups doesn't have to be such a negative thing, even though it can trigger abandonment issues within us. It can, but when we start to work on ourselves and we start to realize just the certain things that we need to work on as human beings, we don't see what other people do as um, we don't see it so much as they're, they're doing something deliberately to hurt us because everybody is really kind of working with the tools that they have. Right. But we can see this person needed to perhaps move forward or that we needed to be in separation with this person for evolution purposes. So the way that you guys are seeing this connection from a heart space or feeling towards this connection or person in your heart space to me looks very evolved. So this is awesome. You're not going to allow what's happening or not happening right now take you off your spiritual quest and journey. You are going to open yourself up to your own healing and your own empowerment right now, despite what's going on with this person. I still do. I don't want to leave you even though I have to. Wow. So this confirms for me, you guys, that someone basically had to leave the situation, but they still had feelings. They didn't really want to, but they felt like they had to do this. So this could be your person or this could be you. Either way, you know in your heart space that even though you're not together, if that's your story, or you walked away or they walked away, that there's still feelings that remain. Okay, just because people did this doesn't mean that they're they're still not connected by their heart space and energy. Okay. So I've got my cat Shibs over here on the side that's thinking about jumping on the table and pulling away all the cards. Please don't. <laughs> okay. So anyways, let's go ahead and continue. Let's see what else we need to know here. Let's go into the physical world because that was the heart space. Let's go into the 3D reality physical world with where you're at with this person. Okay, this is just one card, so I will take it. Okay, so we have family. All right, so why is this family card coming up? Ooh, the three of cups is soul family. This is my, my connection that I'm making here is family and friends, soul family. Um, and it's actually what I was going to say before I even picked up that tarot card, because what I'm getting here is that you see this person as a part of your soul group or your soul family. And then I had a dream. I had a dream last night that's just coming to me right now about soul family and about people being in your soul group. And, um, you know, they, you guys may come together or have been in previous lifetimes, different roles than you have today, but this particular person and you did agree to come together in a contract. And it could be that there are other connections such as, you know, we're not going to really label them, but you know, some terms that get thrown around are uh, karmic connections, other soulmate connections, etc. But there's something for you guys to learn from other people. And there's something for your person to also learn from other people. So I feel like there are other connections or other situations with other people going on as you and this person are either in separation or kind of trying to figure out what you want to do with each other or how you find your way back to one another if that's what happens. But there's something about other people. Um, in the mix here with this person and you. Darling, see you in your dreams. So they're, okay. So this is going to be, I feel, for those of you that are in a separation with this person and they have other situations going on, perhaps you do too, maybe both of you, one, of, one or the other, doesn't really matter, but that's why you have to see this person in their dreams because there is no physical contact. There is no um, seeing each other in the physical world. You, there may not be communication for everybody either. So it's kind of like you guys um, have some sort of a reunion in your dreams, that's where you guys come together in your dreams. So the physical world, that's not really something that is happening right now. And so you rely on your dreams to connect with this person, but you see them as family. And you also see them as somebody, if they are with another person, 
that that's necessary for their growth and development and same goes for you all right really cats are acting up i don't know why stop stop i don't know why they're one of them's hissing anyway so now let's go ahead and go into the soul's energy your soul higher self energy towards this person we have action interesting okay so even though there might not be a lot of action in the physical world there's something going on in the soul. So this is awesome because to me, this is soul development. This is soul growth, soul lessons, ascension taking place. So you see that there's action on a soul level taking place with this individual. It might be that how they inspire you uh, sprints you into action. Ooh, helps you to reevaluate where you're at in your life, where you want to go next, what you want to do. So this is great too, because I feel like this is also a reminder that we all have free will, obviously, in any kind of situation. So you can kind of take a look and see where you're at right now. Has there not been any action with this person for a long time? You know, have we just kind of been putting our lives on hold and maybe waiting for this person to return? Maybe they haven't. Maybe it's time for us to make some new plans. Nothing wrong with that because we still have individual lives to lead and live. So... I feel that um, you do feel like there is growth on a soul level for you and perhaps with, you know, with your person. Um, but the fact of the matter is that there might not be a lot of things that are actually happening in the 3D world. And either you're just making peace with that and just kind of focusing on other things, reevaluating your own life, or you're just kind of taking what you can and you are just being you know, and you're, you're being grateful for this experience, no matter how it's kind of turning out. And I, I think that's beautiful. Great place to be in. Just accepting what is China in your eyes. I saw future together. Beautiful Tori Amos song. Um, this right here is, gosh, such a beautiful song. You guys have to listen to it. And I know I'm not going to remember to put it down below, but um, basically she can feel the distance between her and her person. And uh, it's, you know, it's like China, like it's, it's broken. So you did see a future together with this person. Okay. You did see a future together with this person. I don't know why my cat now is just coughing. Like, what is going on? Why? <laughs> or he's like clearing his throat or something. Um, anyway, sorry, back on track. So you did see a future and you do still see a future together with this person because this is present, right? You do. But it does say I saw, so that's the reason why I'm kind of bringing it back to past tense. You saw a future with this person at one time. You might still, for some of you, see a future. But it might be that because of the action or non-actions that have ta been taken, it might be that you're kind of going back to the drawing board and reevaluating, okay, it's been years. What am I going to do? Or they're with somebody else. What am I going to do? That's only natural for you to be kind of looking at the circumstances. Like, that's reality. Let's not pretend that those things are not happening. And the thing is, we can sit here all day long and say, well, even though they're with this person or even though they haven't spoken to us in years, they still feel something. That's great. But the thing is, if people are not willing to take action and we're just kind of waiting for that and we're not really doing anything or making any plans for ourselves, we've got to look at that and we've got to like really consider that. We have to consider what we're doing with our time, where we're putting our energy. You know, do we, do we, this is just an example. Okay. Cause I don't know how else to explain it or articulate it. Let's just say you want to have children. Okay. And your time it's, it's coming. It happens, right? There's a part of a, of, a, you know, a person's life. Come on, Chibs. There's a part of a person's life where just biologically, um, it's just either not as safe or you're not going to be as fertile to be able to have a child if you want one. So there's a, you know, ideal time frame. And let's just say you're coming up on that time frame and you really want children. And even though you saw this person as your person, you imagine that it would be you and them in the end, having kids and, you know, having a business together and, and, and all these wonderful things. But this other person is 
either remaining stuck in a situation, isn't there yet, doesn't want those same things, doesn't share your same views, whatever the situation might be. So what are you to do? Because you were told that this person is this, or you were told this person is that. So we have to ask ourselves, are we living our lives for us? Or are we living our lives according to either a label or on another person? I say, fuck the labels. And we need to start living for ourselves. So that right there is perhaps an action right now that some of you guys are, th- are thinking of taking. As in, well, you know what? Kind of done this for a while. Maybe it's time for me to see what else is out there. Maybe it's time for me to kind of reevaluate how I'm spending my time and energy. What am I dedicating my time and energy to? Am I dedicating it towards this dream or am I dedicating it towards something that has to to do with just me right now, because that's what we have is we have ourselves. So just take all that with a grain of salt. Um, and, uh, you know, whatever makes you guys happy is what you should be doing for sure. But if something isn't making you happy and you're feeling really stuck, that's an indication right there that something needs to change. And we're the only people that can take actions to change things in our lives. We can't expect other people to do it. We've got to be willing to do it ourselves. So that right there, I always go a little bit deeper for the viewer because I feel like there are a lot of people out there that need a little bit of that push, that it's okay to go in another direction. It's okay to choose yourself. I think like religion and everything else, some of these concepts built around these soul connections, sometimes people do treat it like a cult or a religion where you can't do this and you can't do that. And it's just like, man, I know I don't want to live my life like that. (laughs) I know I don't want to put all my eggs into another human being's basket. If I'm going to put everything into a basket, it's going to be my higher power. It's not going to be a freaking human being. I'll tell you that right now. You know what I mean? So why are we doing it with this person? Why have we been told that this person is someone that we should worship? I'm not saying that that's happened, but I've been in, I've been in this industry now for a while around all these soul connections and these labels. And I've heard it all, you guys, I've heard it all. And I just know it works for me. And so if you guys are attracted to my videos and you guys resonate with the messages, you know, I'm just here to basically always help you guys to empower and choose yourselves at the end of the day. You know, it's wonderful to tap in and see how people are feeling. But again, if they're not really going to take any kind of action steps, sometimes, you know, we've got to make decisions and that's okay. So anyways, all right, enough about that. Now what we're going to do is we are going to shift gears and we're going to go into the energies of the connection. So how are you and this individual connecting right now? All right, what's going on? What's the connective energies? What are you guys both connected to? So we're going to use both of my arrows of love, Oracle and Tarot decks for this one. What is the energy that connects the two of you? Beautiful. What's the energy that connects the two of you? This is like your soul energy, your essence, all right? Higher selves connecting. What is the energy here? Oh, interesting. We have old footage, eject. So it's like ejecting old stories, ejecting old programs ejecting old tapes that maybe we've been replaying over and over and over again. So there could be um, something that you guys are both doing where you're looking to kind of get rid of the old or any old stories that we are telling ourselves. I love that. The Ace of Hearts, which is the Ace of Cups offering. So the Ace of Cups, of course, is an offering from spirit. It doesn't showcase it in this card, but in traditional Rider Waite tarot, it shows a hand coming from the sky with a cup. And that means it's a divine offering. It's an opportunity for us to really, really feel the joy in our hearts, okay? And if we can't feel the joy in our hearts on our own, then we're not going to really be able to sustain it when we connect with other people, all right? Or when it's gone, we're not gonna know how to sustain our own cup. So that's why I always usually say that the Ace of Cups is a card of self-love. 
What we offer to ourselves has a lot to do with how we're going to show up for other people. So if you're not showing up for yourself or loving yourself, the way that you're going to show up for other people is that you need them to fill your cup. That can be a very needy, pushy, unattractive energy to people that aren't looking to be your everything. Okay. And so I feel like there's something going on here with the connection with you and your person right now. This is kind of dropping old stories, dropping old energy. That's not really serving, you know, it's just not really fulfilling. You guys are both ejecting old things that aren't fulfilling to the self. That's what I'm seeing here. And you're looking to love yourselves more, kind of start back at ground zero, which is how am I showing up for me? How do I treat myself? How are other people treating me? Is this a reflection of me? You guys are doing some personal inventory and I really like that. That's awesome. We have casual dating. So that might not be what some of you want to, you know, hear, but if you are in separation with this person, you could be casually dating, maybe they're casually dating, you know, just kind of spending time. Remember that three of cups, family energy and the environment that showed up. Maybe there are other situations going on. It could be though, for some of you that you and this person are not in separation, that you guys are casually seeing each other. That might be why the, it's coming up in the connective energy, but I don't feel like that's for everyone. Hmm. Nine of swords, nine of arrows, overthinking. So this is the deal. So, um, I'm just going to say this because sometimes, sometimes and I've been in this position myself before where it's just like, ah, let's just be friends or let's just casually date. <laughs> I remember, oh God, I remember this one time I was seeing this guy and pretty much, um, you know, things were just, things were really intense. And I thought as far as just, you know, me, how I was feeling, can't really say the same for him. I just was feeling all sorts of ways and very intense, very happy, just like, wow, you know, and it seemed in the beginning he was feeling the same, but I noticed that he was starting to change some of the things that he was saying before and kind of backing out. <laughs> I remember I was just like, not in a good place with myself and was just willing to accept any kind of crumb just to not lose this person in my life. Now, when I reflect back on it now, I just want to cringe. Like I cannot believe the things that I said and even did to try to keep this guy in my life, you know, um, quite pathetic actually. And I don't want to break myself over the coals because obviously I just, I, I wasn't then who I am now. And you have to learn by really royally screwing up sometimes. And I just think that all it did is it just put me more in the state of nine of swords. Like it was a total nightmare. It would have been better for me to just him and I to just completely just stop talking and separate and, and not even go there. Let's not even do this then. Because all it did is it put me in the last two months that we were seeing each other in this complete and total like anxiety ridden state. I remember there was this one time where he actually canceled a date and I thought I was going to lose my shit. Like it was horrible. And I created this thing where, well, then we'll get together the next day. Like it was so crazy and so desperate, you guys. Oh my God. But my point is, is that when we're not being true to ourselves and we're just accepting crumbs, what's going to happen is we just end up sabotaging ourselves. We don't feel good about what we're doing. We're, we're not feeling good with the crap crumbs that we're now being given because before maybe we were being given all we were, we were being given a full cup and now we're being given a cup that has like droplets of substance in it. 
And we're just trying to nourish ourselves with these bits of drops and it's not working. We're dying inside. And that's just what I feel like is going on. Perhaps for some of you, if you have decided we'll just be friends or we'll just casually get together, it'll just be a situation ship. Deep down inside, it might be killing some of you. And it should be killing you because that is a reminder to you that you are not being true to yourself and that you are allowing somebody else to treat you less than you deserve. So you bet your ass you're going to feel pain. You're going to feel anxiety. You're going to be up at night, can't sleep, can't think, can't eat, can't drink, whatever. Because that's an indication of something you shouldn't be doing. So if some of you guys are in this situation and you're feeling like crap, that is why. Because it doesn't honor who you are. And it also doesn't help people to, to change for the better. It, it, it just kind of accelerates or enables people to just go, eh, I don't have to do anything. I don't really have to try. I can just do this. I can see you, but then I can do whatever else I want to do on the side. Who wants to sign up for that? I know I don't. <laughs> I didn't. But obviously, I didn't have a lot of self-worth and self-esteem back then, and I allowed it to happen, and I knew it was happening, and it sucked. And um, it's just one of those things. You know, you live and learn. But when I hear people say like, oh, yeah, we're just going to be friends, um, I have to agree with Billy Crystal in, um, uh, when Harry met Sally, men and, I'm sorry, <laughs> women can't be friends. You can't really be friends with somebody that you have this kind of like love and passion for. I mean, you might feel like you can, and I'm not saying that that's got to be cookie cutter for everybody, but there is something to it. How are you going to not be in this state when suddenly they want to see someone else or that they want to go off and do this or do that? Like, you know, if, if you're this kind of individual that's that attached, which I was to this person in the past, that wasn't going to work. And I went against everything inside of me that was telling me that this isn't a good idea. And then I ended up getting burned because guess what, you guys, at the end of all this stringing me along and spending time with me, which still just like doesn't make sense to me, why I even bothered? I don't even get it. Totally just dumped my ass over a text. And then I heard and discovered all kinds of horrible things he was doing in, you know, in that time in between. It was just awful. It was an awful experience. But I learned a lot about myself through it. I really did. So in a way, it did help me to remove and eject old ways of being, old ways of thinking. So not everything that we go through is a waste of time. These lessons can be very, very valuable. So if some of you guys have been doing this and you know, you're just kind of like, well, I've already been seeing, you know, I've already been saying, okay, that we can casually see each other. I don't want to change it now, this and that. It's never too late to, to change. It's never too late to start taking care of yourself, start honoring yourself. You absolutely have to do it in the name of love for yourself. And that's just what I'm seeing here. So if this casual encounter doesn't work for you, you owe it to yourself to be honest with yourself. And you don't even necessarily have to be honest with this person. You don't really have to explain anything. You just basically stop doing whatever it is that you're doing that's hurting you. Now, the thing is, some of you guys are not seeing this person at all. You're not seeing this person at all, okay? You're just kind of focused on yourself. This person's also focused on themselves, working on themselves, etc. Because remember, this is the connective energy. It could be though, that as we're casually dating, it's like we're in our mental space. We're like really, really thinking it's, it's causing some sort of anxiety. And it could be because we're afraid that we're never going to feel the same way about other people as we did about each other. We're never going to meet someone that actually does it for us like like this person did or, or we did it for this person. So there's this anxiety that we're not going to be able to really, really feel that deep connection. And uh, that's scary. It is scary. I feel like some of you guys are trying to move on and you're having a difficult time because it's just not the same. Well, what I want to say about that is it's not meant to be the same. Every individual encounter is supposed to be unique. You know, 
my my connection with Mr. Moon is completely different than the person I was just talking about. Completely different. Doesn't mean one's better than the other. It just was intense on different levels. One happens to work in my life on a regular basis and the other one was short-lived for a reason. <laughs> but both have something, uh, had something of value and one has something of value to teach me now about myself. So for the connective energy, just take whatever worked for you, what resonated, what your story is, leave anything that wasn't. But I feel like the majority of the energy is that we are learning a lot about ourselves through our prior connection with each other and who we are maybe spending time with now. We're learning a lot about ourselves. And this is awesome because there is some true soul lessons and development that is taking place right now. And that's what this is all about. That's what I like to really focus on. What are we learning? How are we changing? How can we grow? How can we heal? How can we, you know, empower ourselves? So that's what we have. So now we're going to move on into the ascension and we're going to go into individual ascension for this one because that was kind of the connective scenario. But let's see what your person is currently working with, like what current lesson and what current ascension is in the, in, in the making. We're going to go into my treasure trove oracle and match it up with my treasure trove tarot. We have the paparazzi. It says they've got the scoop. Sensitive information is being passed around. Ensure you keep a safe distance from people that gossip. Wow. You know what's so interesting, you guys, is that when I was talking about the past situation for myself, that's actually something that happened. There were people that were around that were sharing things with me that were horrible to hear, but it did help me because I was like, wow, it opened my eyes to what was really going on. So I feel like that's coming up for a reason for me to kind of bring up as an example. If something, you found something out about this person, um, their current ascension is that they're having to sit in it. They're having to lie in the bed that they made. Um, they're having to just take it knowing that you either know something, found something out, they tried to hide something and you can run, but you can't hide. Something is always going to, to catch up with you. And I just feel like that is what has probably happened to this person and what their current ascension is now, which is if you don't lie, then you don't have anything to hide. So they have some sort of lesson in being truthful and honest. All right, let's get some tarot cards here for this. Wow. Ooh, death. Good old death. <laughs> Transformation, inevitable change, blessing in disguise. Yeah, I feel like right now this person, um, I get past energy though. But I also get like currently they're having to lie in the bed that they made. They made some mistakes. They lied. They were not truthful when they should have been. They hid some things. And when we act and operate in those mechanisms or behaviors, um, it's going to come back and bite us in the ass. And I feel that's exactly what has happened to this person. It could include money because we do have that. Uh, is that called a Sith or a Scythe? I think it's a scythe could be saying that wrong but that instrument is cutting right through that dollar <laughs> so it could be a little bit of karma it could be perhaps they lied and and betrayed and somehow that came back in the form of a different lesson to show them that that's not the way you want to be to be more stand up to act with more integrity to be more truthful okay 
So I feel like there's a karmic lesson going on right now for this person. And it is a blessing in disguise because it is for their ascension. Oh, interesting. We have the six of swords. Um, I feel like right now this person could have either lost a job. And so what it's doing though, blessing in disguise, it's actually taking them towards their next, um, like their next lesson, the next stage of their life. Because we have stress reduction, change in position, vacation or holiday. So what it's done is it's kind of forced this person to maybe shift to a different career that's not so stressful. It could be that um, it's caused them to now relocate somewhere else to where maybe they will um, have more happiness and peace. So blessing in disguise is huge here. But the lesson though was a harsh one, I'll tell you that, or is a harsh one, definitely. And we have the tower, yeah, do, ooh, that's it. The tower is painful. When the tower strikes in your life, you really can't avoid it. It's inevitable change. It says bankruptcy, shocking news, and unforeseeable events. Like, you don't really see it coming. It just happens out of nowhere. You're just like, wow, almost shock. I can't believe that that happened. I can't believe that that person found that out. I can't believe that someone said this or someone did this. So I just feel that this person's behavior in the past has not been the greatest. And karmically, they've had to learn their lesson the hard way. But this transformation that is present for them is the blessing in disguise. Okay. Because what it's doing ultimately is it's helping this individual to kind of move away from this behavior because that behavior serves no one. It really doesn't. And they've had to learn that. So that's their current ascension right now. Let's take a look at yours, person watching the video. What is your current ascension and lesson? We have the fisherman. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Try not to focus on the one that got away. A new catch of the day is on the horizon. You know, I feel like that's probably why that message came up and I kind of lingered on that message for a while is because I feel like maybe that's where some of you guys are at. Right now, you're kind of looking to cast your line out there to see what else is out there. It might be that, you know, you've waited too long for this person or you're just kind of like you know it's just not really panning out or going the way that i thought it would so i'm gonna go ahead and just see what else is going on i'm gonna go out and i'm gonna live my life and i again want to tell you guys that that is ascension if we're staying stuck and waiting for things to change yet they never change all we're gonna do is drive ourselves insane we're not growing at all we're stagnant okay so if you guys wanted to just see what's out there, right? Instead of focusing on this one particular person all the time, focus on what else is out there. And it doesn't have to come in the form of a new love, even though that could be what some of you guys want. You want to meet someone new. You're done with this for sure. But there's other things to life than just this soul connection. That could be it too. Let's focus on the bigger picture instead of just this. Love it. Ace of Wands. New ideas, pursuing your dreams, and spark of inspiration. So this is basically saying, try something new, new on for size. Now, if some of you guys are not feeling any kind of a way about this connection that it's like keeping you from living your life or that it's causing you a lot of pain. Let's just say you connected this individual and this is your inspiration. It, it, it helps you. You're in a really good place. Then no worries. This might not be a part of your current lesson. This could be that you've already ascended to this level because you've learned this lesson in the past. But this is basically saying, you know, the light bulb wants to go off for you. And the light bulb can't really go off for you if you're submerged in an old pond. So be willing to, you know, let yourself feel again. Let yourself feel alive again. You know, pull yourself out of this ocean of emotion and get back on dry land and see where that takes you next. Because we have the new, new ideas that might lead to pursuing new dreams and new forms of happiness. the eight of swords. So that's the thing. It's always a choice. You guys, we can stay eight of swords for sure. We absolutely can. I'm not here to tell anybody that they have to do anything, but we have mental prison feeling restricted, 
blocked at every turn. If you feel like you are blocked at every turn or that things are just not flowing, or you always hear readings, this is another one, that this person's coming back, that union is on the horizon, yet it doesn't happen. These are all very, very generalized readings. I certainly, just me, my own opinion, myself, I take these readings as light suggestions, reminders for us, maybe even entertainment for some. But I certainly want wouldn't base very important decisions on anything that comes through a reading. It's light guidance, and you definitely need to be discerning on what you want to take, what works, what feels right, versus what doesn't. So if you guys feel that, you know, this connection has just become a prison for you where you just feel like I just can't do it anymore. I'm just like done. I feel blocked. I feel like this heaviness you are being offered because remember you guys, the aces show a hand coming from the divine and saying, guess what? You can do something else. You can focus on something else. You don't have to feel this way. There are other things to life that you can do. So we're only as stuck as we allow ourselves to be. And now we have the three of wands. Payoff rewards on the horizon. Love that. So this is about looking out onto the horizon and realizing that there's something out there for us. But we have to be willing to go out there and find it. We have to be willing to cast our line into new ponds in order for new things to happen. So a part of your ascension for the viewer is that don't get stuck or hung up on anything. Okay. Really, really try to be more free, be, you know, allow yourself wiggle room in this connection. It doesn't have to happen. Um, this doesn't have to be your one and only, even though some of you might look at this as no, this is my person. This is who I want to end up with. This is it for me. You know, all those things, no problem. But are you living your life in the meantime? Are you doing you, etc.? I feel like that's all that spirit's saying is that there's an opportunity for ascension to come up with some new ideas, new ways of living, new ways of being, maybe pursuing your dreams or something in the meantime, while maybe there's not a lot of activity going on here, that wouldn't be a bad thing. Okay. So that is what we have for your ascension for the viewer. So now we're going to go ahead and shift gears into the higher self of this person. So their higher self obviously is much different than the 3D self. The 3D self might not be doing much talking. The 3D self may have created a lot of hurt and damage. So this higher self energy is who this person truly is at the end of the day um, without all of their, you know, human defects and just all that ego, et cetera. We're stripping all that away and we're connecting with the person of who they really are soul to soul. Okay. Stripping away all the human stuff. So this particular deck is called my divine love inspiration counterpart message. So what is the message here from this counterpart to you? for inspirational purposes, for you to continue to just do you and celebrate yourself. Accountability. Wow. Don't you remember earlier on, I was talking about you guys both taking personal inventory. This just confirms for me that that's true. Accountability. My negative behavior was never about you. So it's about taking accountability for our own actions. So this person from their higher self wants you to know that their negative behavior or anything that they display towards you, it wasn't about you. It was about them. Okay. And it was also just about their own character defects. It was about their own lack of healing and their own traumas. So when you look at things from that perspective, we don't have to take it so personally. I remember taking things very, very personally. We're talking like daggers through the heart with the things that I heard that this person said and did behind my back. And I was in pain for a very, very, very long time. And it took my own growth, my own shadow work and time 
to finally get to a point where I realized, wow, this person is very broken, just like me in some ways, and they acted this way because of their brokenness. I mean, that th this person may have looked at me at that time and thought, wow, what a chump she is, that she's just willing to take whatever I'm dishing out, which is nothing, and just willing to just kind of settle for this crappy behavior of mine. And that's not who I am now, right? That's not who I am now. I would never take that kind of treatment from somebody. As, never. But back then, my behavior to allow that to happen was about me. It wasn't about them. You see what I'm saying? So when we do that personal inventory and we're willing to take accountability for how we acted and what may have contributed to either a demise or the circumstances, whatever, then we don't feel so angry. Then we don't feel so victimized. We feel more um, coming from a space of understanding. And it doesn't make it okay with what people did. Of course not. But we understand why they did what they did. And we don't personalize it and make it about us and feel so wounded. That's what I'm talking about. So that's what this person is bringing forth to you from their higher self is that their negative behavior was not about you. It was about them. We have solo journey, just do you and enjoy the mystery. That's beautiful because that's really the message that's been coming up this entire reading. Sometimes it is a solo journey. They might be on a solo journey, just trying to do them and trying to figure out what it all means. The mystery of life. Literally, I'm getting that your person right now is on a, on a quest for the search of the meaning of life and they haven't found it yet. And so they're asking you to also enjoy the same journey, enjoy the same mystery. It's a mystery that what will happen between the two of you. It's a mystery if you'll ever hear from them again, or if you guys are meant to be, etc. But instead of focusing on an outcome, try to focus on your own individual journey because that's what this person is doing too. And gratitude, love it. So this is, of course, remember I said something about being in a state of gratitude, right? For what this person has represented in your life, because you in a way wouldn't be the person that you are today without having gone through this with them, right? So practicing being in a state of grace is a good way to remain in a more balanced state of mind with this individual, just with the whole situation. But it says, thank you for loving me in my dark times. So to me, you guys, this individual is letting you know that they know that you've done some sort of work and healing on yourself to where they know that you realize that their behavior was not about you. It was about them and that you love yourself enough to know that you won't put yourself in that circumstance again, but they thank you for loving them in their shadow, as in you can accept their shadow. You may not want to deal with their shadow, but you accept from a human to human aspect that everybody has a shadow self. We all have the ability and capability to hurt people with the things that we say and do. This person may have just done a lot of it to you, but you're looking at this for what it is, face value. You were dealing with their shadow. You were dealing with their darkness at that time, right? And you're able to separate and still love this person regardless. You're able to connect with their light and they're saying, thank you. Thank you for loving me even in my dark times. I know I didn't deserve it is what I'm also hearing. I know I didn't deserve it, but thank you for loving me throughout all that time anyways. So some of these things this person may have wanted to say to you, but couldn't say, which is why it's coming through this particular, um, this particular message. Don't settle. I love this. You deserve nothing but the best. So that's what I was just talking about. They in a way are like letting, you know, they know you're not going to settle next time. They know that you are, you've upgraded your energy because of maybe what you guys went through. They're a part of that. So in a way they're proud. They're proud to be a part of this lesson for you that you're not going to settle for crap crumbs again. You're not going to settle for less than you deserve. And they're grateful to be a part of that, right? Gathering. We will flock together once again. 
So this person, there is no guarantees, but from their higher self, what they're saying is we will flock together once again. Now, does that mean it will be in a physical world sense as in this lifetime? Maybe not, not for everybody. But what I did get from the very beginning of this reading is that you and this person are a part of the same soul group, soul family. So you bet your ass you're going to flock together again because you guys are connected on a soul level and you guys may come back in different forms and teach each other different lessons next time. But you and this person are connected. So you will flock together once again. You know, that's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And um, on the bottom of the deck, I'm just going to look at this. We have way shower. You are everything I hope to be. So if you see yourself as a way shower, light worker, star seed, you know, something like that, you're actually showing the way for a lot of people and you're showing the way for a lot of people through what you've gone through with this person. So they have been a significant part of your healing and ascension. And so it is best to be in a state of gratitude when it comes to connecting to them. Try not to be in the lower vibrational energies of that ego, which is like, you know, I hate them for what they did to me. You know, I hope that they get theirs, etc. Try not to remain in that energy. You can be there for a little bit because it's only natural to feel those things, but you don't want to remain in that energy long term because all that will do is keep you stuck. You're going to show the way for others on how to be. And it might be that the fact that you were able to love this person, even in their darkness, that you're able to kind of let them go and move on with their with your life and to be a powerful individual now you're everything that they hope to be you inspire this person to want to be a better person a better version of themselves so in a way like you're showing this person the way you're showing them how it's done this is how it's done you're showing them and they're saying you are everything i hope to be it's amazing so that's what we have all right, so we are going to end this reading now with some messages from Spirit. What does Spirit want you to know about this, this, this whole situation? What does Spirit want you to know? All right, first of all, what spirits are coming up? We're going to grab three for my Spirits of Darkness and Light Divination deck. What spirits are coming through for as guidance? So we have two, but I want one more. All right. Spirit of the waters. You know, water has come through a lot throughout this reading. It came through at the very beginning. The oceans, remember? The Pisces energy, water. A lot of watery energy in the reading here. Cleansing, healing, and emotions. So spirit of water. I feel like what spirit is trying to tell the viewer to work with water. Okay whether it's through a ritual, whether it's for your own self-care or you're using water, like I said, in some sort of like healing or ritual, this is good. Tears also, very cleansing. If you need to purge energy, that sort of thing, don't bottle things up, feel it. So that way you can heal it, right? So spirit of water is coming through to help cleanse, heal, and for you to embrace your emotions. So that's what spirit is really suggesting is to work with water. So certain ways that you can work with water. Um, as a matter of fact, it's one of the elements that I probably use the most, uh, with ritual water. It's one of the reasons why I came up with the, um, the soap ritual boxes is because it has to do with water and water for me is first of all, it's, it's, um, it, just being submerged in water is where a lot of my vision and connection to higher self come from. Don't really understand 100% why that is. I have some ideas, but it's where I feel connected the most. So it might be for some of you guys, when you're taking a shower, you're taking a bath, make this a regular ritual because this is how you're going to be connecting with your emotions, connecting to self, doing that healing, cleansing, purging work. Um, and of course, rituals that include, um, you know, certain cleansing baths or, you know, cleansing items where you're washing impurities away with water. This could also be like you are writing things down and you're taking the pieces of paper, your wishes and casting them into flowing water, which like flows things out of your life or, or just, you know, 
naturally just occurring type of energy. So there's all kinds of things that you can work with water. This could also be moon water as well, certain moon phases. So when the moon is full in specific um, signs, astrological signs, or just a specific moon, charge up your water, charge up, charge up the water and use that water to either bathe in. You can use the water to even drink, you know, you can use the water for many, many magical purposes. So I really like that that's coming through. Now we have the spirit of the past, nostalgic, aching old flame. So I feel like the reason that this is coming up is because there's probably a lot of you that ache for this person. They're the one that got away. They're the old flame. You're always nostalgic. You know, you could be really thinking about this person from your past. Like, why are they still with you? Why is their energy something that you just constantly connect with? Why can't you let this person go? What's the deal? What's the situation? Well, I'll tell you why. Because there is a connection. There's a soul contract between the two of you guys. Now, that doesn't mean that you cannot break this contract or that you're doomed until you guys clear the karma and come back together. Hell no. Nothing has that much control or power in your life unless you let it, okay? But you made a commitment and a promise to yourselves through this contract that you would heal, that you would feel, that you would embrace everything that comes to you through the energy of this connection. Now, whether your person is opening themselves up to it and doing the work, it's really irrelevant. What is this contract doing for you? What are you doing with this energy? Are we just busy kind of staying stuck in an old story? Or are we actually utilizing this to our advantage, healing and empowering ourselves and learning and ascending? So I feel like there's a lot of different levels here for people. And I just think that that is just what spirit is pushing here, pushing you to flow more. That's what the water is all about, pushing you Instead of letting go and ho like holding on for dear life and not being able to let this go. That's not what this is about. That's not what spirit intended this to be for you. Spirit intended this connection to be for these purposes here. That's what it was for. All right. So if you're not doing that work, that means that you're actually not honoring the contract. And when we're not honoring our fate and our destiny and our contracts, then things don't seem to flow in our lives. <laughs> so make this more about you instead of your person and see how the energy starts to flow again in your life. That's what I'm getting here. It's beautiful. All right, we're going to go into my divine feminine healing cards. shining star. You will always stand out above all the rest. Yes, because this is a special connection. <laughs> it absolutely is. So whenever this card shows up, I always know that spirit is basically saying, you're not wrong. You're not wrong about this person. You're not wrong about how you feel. There is something very significant here. This person is connected to you through a contract. They are connected to you on a soul level. Okay, but let's not get that misconstrued into thinking that we can never feel peace or that we have to stay um, shackled to this person in a low vibrational way. All right. We have support. I have faith that the universe is guiding me towards what is best for me always you guys this is the support of the universe always guiding us to our highest good don't ever doubt that so if you and this individual are not coming together right now it may not be for your highest good or it may not be for their highest good so lean into the flow lean into the support that you're getting right now lean into what's happening and what's not happening because it's all happening this way for a reason. We have behavior. I will not engage in behaviors that don't align with my values and belief system. When I do this, no one benefits. So 
Remember how I was talking about how I was behaving in the past with that person that I was talking about? That did not align with my values at all or my belief system. I wanted to be in a committed relationship, but yet I was in this open relationship. <laughs> I wanted to be with somebody that could actually tell me that they cared about me. That wasn't happening. So that behavior and the way I was behaving was not matching up with what I truly, who I truly was, which is why it fell apart. So the thing is, remember how the message came up earlier, how we might be casually dating this person and thinking that it's going to be okay, thinking that, well, we'll take what we can get. Don't even do it to yourself. You, you deserve more than what you're getting, you guys, if you guys are accepting crumbs right now. So let's not crap crumb ourselves. And instead, let's focus our, just focus our thoughts, focus our attention on ourselves and what we do want to create. Instead of diving and marinating in a pool of behavior that doesn't serve us. That's the spirit saying. <laughs> All right, last messages here come from my Twin Flame Angel Numbers cards. So these numbers could be significant on your spiritual journey right now or to this connection. So let's go ahead and see what we need to know here. 2211. So I actually did a reading. I think it was my last reading here on Mystic Moon on Friday. Maybe it was Friday. Yeah, I think so. And I did a number for the connection and the number was 11. So if you guys are seeing 11s, there could be some sort of a connection to this reading, to that reading. I don't know. But it says visions in your third eye are coming in the form of telepathic waves from this person. So the reason I'm not saying the word is because, you know, that's not everybody's thing. It's not everybody's gig. It's fine. But we have also master number 22. These are master numbers. 11, 22, and 33 are master numbers. Look them up. There's a significance in these numbers because you came here to not just do your, not saying ascension is ever easy, but you came here for a higher purpose. You absolutely did. You came here for a higher purpose. You came here to elevate more than most and that might be why you chose this contract in order to help you to do so. So the visions in your third eye are coming in the form of telepathic waves. I think that wording is also very interesting since we talked about oceans. And I'm making the connection here. Waves roll in my thoughts. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at that. That's crazy. So what I'm picking up on here is that the waves that are coming into this person's thoughts are coming from you. You get this? And the waves that are come that these thoughts are rolling back to you. <laughs> That's nuts. Oh my gosh, I love this. This is so cool. So pay attention to the telepathic communication because and there's something about water. There's something about being in water, working with water energy that allows you and this person to communicate telepathically. Wow. All right. Let's get one more. We have two, two, two. So definitely some sort of two energy here. The necessary seeds have been planted on your journey. Remain patient as they begin to gestate. So this is the brown energy. And I look at this as like, you know, like the, not root chakra, but like earth, like it's, it's even deeper, like it's very deeply rooted, right? Like we're talking even like ancestors lifetimes ago. That's how I see earth energy. So seeds have been planted long ago. This is going to be belief systems. This is going to be traumas. This is going to be deep and it's going to take time for this to be undone. So if you're here to heal and you have experienced some pretty intense things, what I'm getting here for you guys is that you're taking one for the team. You're actually clearing karma 
for your ancestral line, okay? I don't know why that's coming through this message, but it is. So you and this person are connected to the same soul group, soul family. So there's something that you guys are both doing for an your ancestral lines. So that's why there could be a lot of traumas and a lot of things that have come through this connection for the both of you. And, um, you know, again, like that ocean water energy, it was all about what? cleansing and healing through your emotions. You see this? So that is a big theme for this connection, especially this week. So work with water energy, work with your emotions, embrace your emotions. And um, there's definitely something positive happening here. That's what I'm seeing. So anyways, you guys, that is what I have for you. Uh, well, remain patient. I just want to say this real quick. Remain patient as they begin to gestate. Things don't happen overnight. Things take time. Anyways, that's all I have to say. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching the video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and to turn on your notifications. I have links down below if you guys want to go ahead and send me a little donation just for thanks for bringing this to you guys. Um, all those things will be down below if you feel inclined. So thank you again, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.